Good evening, everybody. The political persecution of President Trump goes on in a New York courtroom. President Trump facing a Soros-sponsored Marxist district attorney, a Marxist dim judge, Juan Merchan, who has hit Trump with a gag order. Merchan is a, not only a creepy Marxist dim, but a coward whose family business includes raising tens of millions of uh, dollars for Marxist dims like the venal Adam Schiff. And now Merchan has impaneled his required 12 jurors and an alternate, more alternates to come. And they are, well, the 12 are much like the rest of Manhattan. And that is uh, Marchan and these corrupt judges who make up the New York judiciary won't change the venue or remove the judge because it's clear they're just too politically corrupt. By the way, that uh, ratio of Democrat to Republicans in Manhattan is eight to one. Donald Trump spoke out about the injustice of it all and urged the Marxist judge to lift that unfair gag order. And people know, and people know it's very unfair. The gag order has to come off. People are allowed to speak about me and I have a gag order just to show you how much more unfair it is. And the conflict has to end with the judge. The judge has a conflict, the worst I've ever seen. And it has to end with the judge. The gag order has to come off. I should be allowed to speak. Every time I come out to speak to you, I want to be open because we did absolutely... Well, meanwhile, we have Israel forced to take action against the... Uh, a terrorist sponsor state of Iran and all of its barbaric proxies across the Middle East. Israel launching airstrikes near a major Iranian air base late yesterday, leading to the Biden administration's expression of shock and surprise that the Jewish state would once again defend itself against the evil Iranian state. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the Biden regime didn't sign off on that attack. No, sir as if anyone needs permission from this uh, Biden regime to engage in a clear act of self-defense. Israel attacked Iran from within the country using several micro drones, reportedly hitting a military base in Isfahan. And there were false reports that Israel had breached an Iranian nuclear reactor, more fake news designed to smear the Israeli government. At the same time as attacking Iran, Israel conducted airstrikes in southern Syria, targeting air defense and early warning systems. Meanwhile, radical pro-Hamas demonstrators, well, they lost it on campus yesterday, staging multiple uprisings, complete with chants and banging drums. New York police arrested 100 of those left-wing degenerates. And joining us now to discuss this is the best-selling author of The Rise in Defense of Judeo-Christian Values and Freedom, Chairman of ACT for America, Bridget Gabriel. Bridget, great to have you with us. Uh, let's start, uh, first of all, with the, you, what is becoming a narrative uh, in, in, this, uh, in this country, at least, uh, that uh, somehow... Israel requires the approbation of a, uh, of a Biden regime that is led by a puppet president, an impaired, cognitively impaired president, uh, and one who is clearly politically corrupt. You're thinking. Israel is not going to wait on any permission from Biden, and Israel just proved it by attacking Iran, which was disapproved by the Biden administration. But Israel wanted to send a very clear message to Iran. We can attack you anytime, anywhere, whenever we want, and we can inflict major damage. This was just a warning shot. Israel did not fire at the nuclear uh, uh, places in Iran, even though it fired close to them. What Israel attempted to fire and fired at was the military installation where some of the drones and the bombs launched at Israel were launched from. It's a warning attack, and Israel also probably was uh, waiting to see, to make sure they take action before the Passover, which starts in just a couple of days. They wanted to make Make sure Iran does not attack or do anything towards Israel and the Passover holiday. 
the the idea that uh, right now this administration uh, has constrained Israel in its response, uh, given the attacks on Israel, uh, more than 300 missiles and rockets and drones uh, fired uh, on Israel by the Iranians directly. Uh, this is, uh, to some, I, I think it's safe to say, is a, a disappointment in terms of a response by Israel to Iran. Uh, and there's no question that the constraint uh, in this response by Israel against Iran uh, was the influence of President Biden. Do you not, do you not agree? Uh, I agree with that. And it was also twofold. Also, Israel does not want to be dragged into full-fledged war with Iran because Israel knows. Well, Iran, yeah, Iran itself, look, their army is very weak. They are a paper tiger. Uh, they probably used all the, the, the strength that they had when they attacked Israel. But what Israel is concerned about is the attacks from Hezbollah, which is the Iranian proxy in Lebanon, which can inflict major attack against Israel because of the weapons that they have and the proximity to Israel. And so uh, this was a limited attack because Israel, as well as Iran, both do not want to get into a major confrontation. Yet for the first time, a red line has been crossed. And Israel is now going to sit aside and allow a red line to be crossed when Iran attacked Israel. While America and Biden do not care about how many times our red line is crossed by Iran, after all, they attacked us 15 times before we did anything. And killed three of our service members, Israel was not going to sit on the sidelines without doing something. Now, I'm not sure if this was actually the major retaliation attack against Iran, but I guess maybe Israel felt it had to do something before the Shabbat starts. They had to wait, obviously, 48 hours because of the pressure from the Biden administration. But Israel felt it had to do some type of a response before the Sabbath, which just started in Israel. What is the uh, the implication here? Uh, we have not seen the the United Nations uh, take action here against uh, Iran for that uh, that attack, that direct attack on Israel, unprecedented, the first time in history that it's occurred. Uh, we have not seen uh, the NATO nations or the other allies of either the United States or Israel uh, respond. Uh, for all the world, it it, uh, it was as if. Uh, Israel was in this moment uh, isolated. Do you not agree? Well, Israel is always isolated at the United Nations. Look, when you look at the United Nations and you look at Israel and America, Israel's strongest ally, and then you look on the other side at the Islamic bloc, 57 nations at the United Nations who vote against Israel. As a matter of fact, Iran sits and at one time led the Human Rights Commission. So uh, the, 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 it's already tilted against Israel. And thankfully, we just averted, thank God for America, who had the backbone to be veto uh, uh, the quote unquote mm -hmm. Palestine uh, wanting to get on the uh, uh, on the UN become a member of the UN and thankfully we were able to uh, uh, veto that. Uh, but look what they're pushing and how far they are pushing. And of course, we don't, we're not going to hold our breath and expect any condemnation from the United Nations. They're not going to raise their voice. Yeah, it, it, it is a shame, but it is a shame that has been long lasting, as you say, decades of, uh, well, the uh, disapprobation of the, the United Nations, to put it kindly, uh, the outright hostility toward the, uh, the nation of Israel. Bridget Gabriel, we thank you for being with us. Uh, Bridget, best-selling author, chairman of ACT for America. Good to see you. Thank you. And please stay with us. We're coming right back with much more. Three years ago, frankspeech.com was launched during the height of mass media censorship to give voices back to those who had their voices silenced. This April, Lindell TV celebrates three years of uncensored truth about America's stolen elections, the voting machines, and the fight to return to paper ballots. Today, we stand at the precipice of a new era covering the most important presidential election in American history. An era defined by the battle for some of our most fundamental rights, freedom of speech, 
freedom of press, and secure elections. We at Frank Speech refuse to be silenced. We refuse to bow down to the forces that seek to dictate what we can and cannot say. We are the media now. Join us in this fight at frankspeech.com. You might not want to hear what we're saying, but we're going to say it. Meet Jim and Mary, a seasoned couple who have weathered the storms of life and have witnessed the evolution of our great nation. Today, they embark on a journey that's as important as any they faced before, exercising their right to vote. They belong to a generation that built this country, fought for its values of faith, family, and freedom, and now they worry if their votes will truly count. But fear not, Jim and Mary are members of AMAC. As AMAC members, they can rest easier knowing that AMAC is at the forefront fighting to reduce potential election fraud. AMAC stands tall, advocating for voter ID, opposing ballot harvesting, and scrutinizing the risks of mail-in ballots. Stand with Jim and Mary, join AMAC today, and let's preserve and uphold the values that make America strong, because your voice matters, and so does your vote. I'm excited to announce we're having a huge MyPillow spring sale. And here's a few examples. Buy one of our MyPillow 2.0s, you get another MyPillow 2.0 absolutely free. Made with cooling technology, the best pillow ever just got even better. And this just in, nine brand new colors and styles of our Percale bed sheets. They're made with the finest long staple cotton, and now you can save 50% or more. That's as low as $24.98. And for the first time this year, I'm bringing you our My Slippers and Sandals for as low as $25 a pair. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your MyPillow 2.0s. Buy one, get one free. Per kale sheets, as low as $24.98. My Slippers and Sandals, as low as $25 a pair. And for a limited time, when you order $75 or more, your entire order ships absolutely free. Welcome back. And now a disturbing video of a man who set himself on fire outside uh, the courtroom in New York where President Donald Trump is facing charges, uh, of course, and also facing uh, a, an unfriendly jury, a, a Marxist dim judge, and of course, a, well, a George Soros sponsored district attorney, Alvin Bragg. And to add to all of that, uh, a man setting himself a fire. Uh, out in front of the courtroom, uh, the courthouse. Uh, it was put out within just moments, but uh, leaving a, a, a tragic, terrible scene outside the courthouse as a number of reporters and witnesses were looking on. And in the midst of all the madness uh, in uh, these uh, crazy days of the Mike Johnson regime as speaker, uh, firecracker Marjorie Taylor Greene had a really, really brilliant idea. Why not have all of those Ukraine flag-waving uh, 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 partisans who want to send all of our money over to the Ukraine, uh, why not just have them join uh, the Ukrainian military if they're going to vote for such legislation? Uh, and that is exactly what she recommended. And I think it's a terrific idea, don't you? Sign them up. Get them on the way right now. And now, what about that new CEO of NPR? You know, the government-funded left-wing Marxist dim uh, propaganda outlet. Well, her name is Catherine Mayer. She was brought in to fix NPR, ostensibly because NPR was so overwhelmingly Marxist dim. Uh, one, uh, one source pointing out that there were 87 uh, Dems in the uh, newsroom, no Republicans at all. And the problem is the new CEO is a flaming Marxist Dem herself. And by the way, uh, more flaming than the previous CEO. Um, so we've got the former NPR editor who resigned after watching the infestation of Marxist Dem activists masquerading as journalists take over 
NPR. And joining us now to take all of this up is the managing editor of Newsbusters, Curtis Houck. And it's great to have you with us, Curtis. Uh, it's it's great to have you here. I just I, I'm I'm sitting here thinking about this woman taking over NPR as if she were somehow to be an improvement over the the previous leadership. This woman is a product of the Atlantic Council, uh, the Council for Foreign mm -hmm. Relations, the World Economic Forum. What on earth uh, is going on uh, that we tolerate this kind of uh, idiocy? Uh, it's spending taxpayer monies on a left-wing propaganda operation. I mean, there's an, any number of directions to go with this, Lou. I mean, you've been in politics a long time. You know that this has been an issue. You know, folks like Yuri Belinner, to his credit, he's uh, really brave to come. It's one thing to be a former employee to say that there's bias going on at NPR, but it's one thing to another thing to be a senior editor at a news organization and come out and say this entire organization is rotten here. OK, yes, there should be you know, news uh, on the radio, but the way it's being conducted right now is just not working. The 87 to zero comment, um, you know, I'll start, I'll start with the new CEO, but I think with her, her left-wing views and her just deranged aversion and outright hatred for the First Amendment is not disqualifying. In fact, my boss, Tim Graham, has argued that it is qualifying, that this is exactly what NPR and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting wants in someone like this, mm -hmm. who has such an aversion to the First Amendment, that in order to fight disinformation, we need to get rid of the First Amendment. You know, they don't under, she refuses to accept the fact that with the First Amendment and Congress being, you know, not being allowed to really create any rules or laws restricting speech, that means that you have to use your own head to decipher what's true and what's not. There's a, such a thing as satire. People are allowed to exaggerate. This happens all the time in politics and in our own lives, but they cannot stand the fact that people are able to think for themselves. So I think that's the problem <laughs> with NPR currently. And the last thing I'll just make is also the donation. You know, the Republicans, decade after decades, my boss, Tim Graham, Brent Bozell, they've been talking about this for over 35 years, and yet nothing has happened on the Hill in Congress. Well, nothing's happened on the Hill. Uh, well, a lot's happened on the Hill, but none of it good. Uh, <laughs> it's certainly in terms of the uh, support for the First Amendment to have a, an arrogant global uh, elitist like uh, Kath Catherine Mayer uh, say that it gets tricky if you, you know, if you really have to stop uh, all of the misinformation out there. One, NPR is not an arbiter of truth. Uh, neither is the right. CEO, Catherine Mayer. She's just another elitist clown. Uh, out of the uh, out of the Atlantic Council, and and a lot of American taxpayers don't even realize how uh, sorted uh, the the uh, these uh, unelected organiz organizations mm -hmm. filled with unelected elites really are. But what's really to be uh, disgusting is the way in which the swamp uh, and all its its extended culture uh, simply embraces her, whether Republican or Democrat because she is an elitist and uh, they must halfway agree with her views of the First Amendment. And we uh, awful, uh, terrible, uh, lowly people here uh, in the rest of the world uh, just simply don't measure up to their high standards of uh, authoritarianism and totalitarianism. Right. Uh, th this is who they are. And this is what the fight is. And we have a Republican Party that thinks it's still about, you know, uh, uh, a, a 1950s station wagon, a tea party, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know what. Uh, this is a, t the Republican Party has lost its moorings uh, completely, in my view, whether it's about the media, whether it is about the, uh, the budget. Uh, they have, I don't know what they stand for anymore. Do you? Well, I, I, you know, one thing that I think everyone should agree on, and I think a lot of Americans, when it comes to NPR, this is one of those gimmies, you know, you might say. I mean, yes, there are issues in our politics that can be kind of complicated, but I feel like NPR is one of those issues, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, so we include PBS on that as well on the TV yeah, side, but, that should be kind of there a is, there, I, I just got to stop you. There are no, there are no gimmies uh, when you are in it the Republican be. Party. Uh, there are no gimmies. Can you tell me one thing they haven't screwed up uh, since, uh, say, 
Mike Johnson was made speaker. I mean, one thing. Well, uh, they've screwed Jack, up everything. Was, they haven't accomplished anything. Back, there are no gimmicks. Go back further That's my than only that. point. Huh? You, you go back. I mean, I think you, you'd go back further than that. I mean, obviously, where there comes to taxes. Well, yes, you do. But policy. my point was, my point was, you, there are no gimmicks. You can go back as far as you want. But I just think in terms of popularity that like among the people that you're like, why is the why we're the United States? We're not China. So why do we have state run media in this country where our tax dollars go to fund the media so that people can have fancy equipment? I mean, that's the kind of thing about government waste that shouldn't make any sense. But obviously it does because people are comfortable with it. People, you know, get used to it. It's the big bird killing big bird. Republicans on this issue get scared all the time. They get scared and bullied um, by Democrats. Obviously, Big Bird isn't even controlled by NPR and PBS anymore. Big Bird is now part of HBO. Um, and the argument I hear all the time that I heard this in college too with NPR it was like, well, you know, if we defund NPR, states in you know rural areas aren't going to be have a place to get their news. Listen here, unless you're a retired, you know, Marxist college professor living out your days in a cabin, you're not going to be listening to NPR. But train derails, you're not going to be getting your news from there. We have a lot of issues right. in this country. Spending is one of them. Um, you know, that's cutting on the. So edges, what do we do? Obviously, so what do we do? Start. So what do we do, Curtis? We got to keep the. You got to keep the pressure on these people, and you have to be able to educate the public. We can't. Right? We can't even we get pressure to, on the. We can't even get our own party to pay attention to the will of the people. I mean, we were watching a clown show and a parade of fools uh, on Wash on Capitol Hill right now. Uh, and we're going to get them to think about maybe doing something about NPR. Uh, you know, this is where we are and we've got to acknowledge it. That's the context of, uh, of this discussion and where we are. It's what? It is frustrating. It is frustrating, it is absolutely. Indeed. So, Curtis, we're, we're out of time, and my apologies for taking up too much time. But thank you for being with us, and I look forward to our next conversation. And before we go to break, my pillow is excited to announce they're having a huge spring sale. And here are a few samples. Buy one MyPillow 2.0 and get another one absolutely free. The pillows are made with cooling technology, which means the best pillow got even better. And this just in, nine brand new colors and styles of their percale bed sheets. They are made with the finest long staple cotton. And now you can save 50% or more. That's as low as $24.98 a set. And for the first time this year, my slippers and sandals as low as $25 a pair. So go to MyPillow.com, use promo code Dobbs or call 800-977-9152 to get the MyPillow 2.0, buy one, get one free, or the Percale sheets for as low as $24.98, and my slippers and sandals for as low as $25 a pair. And for a limited time, when you order $75 or more, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com and use promo code Dobbs. Coming up next, we'll talk to the New York City Councilwoman who scolded illegal aliens who were complaining about their free food and their taxpayer-funded accom accommodations. Can you believe that? And uh, join us for my podcast, The Great America Show, available at ludobs.com, wherever you get your podcasts. We're coming right back. Please stay with us. Meet Jim and Mary, a seasoned couple who have weathered the storms of life and have witnessed the evolution of our great nation. Today, they embark on a journey that's as important as any they faced before, exercising their right to vote. They belong to a generation that built this country, fought for its values of faith, family, and freedom, and now they worry if their votes will truly count. But fear not, Jim and Mary are members of AMAC, as AMAC members, they can rest easier knowing that AMAC is at the forefront, fighting to reduce potential election fraud. AMAC stands tall, advocating for voter ID, opposing ballot harvesting, and scrutinizing the risks of mail-in ballots. Stand with Jim and Mary, join AMAC today, and let's preserve and uphold the values that make America strong. Because your voice matters, and so does your vote. 
I'm excited to announce we're having a huge MyPillow spring sale. And here's a few examples. Buy one of our MyPillow 2.0s, you get another MyPillow 2.0 absolutely free. Made with cooling technology, the best pillow ever just got even better. And this just in, nine brand new colors and styles of our Percale bed sheets. They're made with the finest long staple cotton, and now you can save 50% or more. That's as low as $24.98. And for the first time this year, I'm bringing you our My Slippers and Sandals for as low as $25 a pair. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your MyPillow 2.0s. Buy one, get one free. Percale sheets as low as $24.98. My slippers and sandals as low as $25 a pair. And for a limited time, when you order $75 or more, your entire order ships absolutely free. Three years ago, FrankSpeech.com was launched during the height of mass media censorship to give voices back to those who had their voices silenced. This April, Lindell TV celebrates three years of uncensored truth about America's stolen elections, the voting machines, and the fight to return to paper ballots. Today, we stand at the precipice of a new era covering the most important presidential election in American history, an era defined by the battle for some of our most fundamental rights, freedom of speech, freedom of press, and secure elections. We at Frank Speech refuse to be silenced. We refuse to bow down to the forces that seek to dictate what we can and cannot say. We are the media now. Join us in this fight at frankspeech.com. You might not want to hear what we're saying, but we're going to say it. Illegal aliens are getting assistance with their food, their housing, even legal services. In California, for example, lawmakers there are considering making illegal aliens eligible for state-backed home loan programs. Isn't that nice? Americans have been compelled by their politicians to subsidize illegal aliens on a scale never before seen, never before imagined in this country. It goes well beyond generosity. Uh, it is, for American citizens, more like extortion. And yet some of these people uh, who are being brought in by the Biden administration, uh, the, the grand Marx, uh, Marxist regime, well, these folks aren't happy. Uh, these illegal aliens don't think they're getting enough help. Listen to a few of their grievances. But at the shelter, the food, my kids cannot eat the food at the shelter. And on, on Ramadan time, we couldn't eat because when you come back for on the breaks, the food is no good at all. Wow. When New York City Councilwoman Vicki Palladino heard those complaints and complaints like those, she responded, well, the way any decent American would, with compassion. But she also had a point to make, and she did. Here we go. How much more are we supposed to do? How much more are we capable of doing? This system is so overworked and overburdened. We don't have the resources that you need to get what you, what you need. I mean, your testimonies move me tremendously. I don't want to see anybody mistreated in any sort of way. But I have to ask you, what motivated you to come here thinking the streets are paved with gold? They're not. Well, she got right to the point. And joining us now is New York City Councilwoman Vicki Palladino. And uh, I have to say, uh, you nailed it, uh, and I, and I just can't even imagine what that was like sitting there listening to that kind of grievance from anyone that ungrateful. 
Well, that was the whole point, Lou. Uh, I, you know, we've been doing this now for over a year, a year and three months uh, with the illegals coming in. Uh, and for the most part, you listen to their pleas and you understand it on a humanitarian level. But this goes beyond humanitarianism now. What we are talking about is greed. Anything they want, they have pushed the line and crossed the line to a limit where we just simply cannot do this anymore. This was ungrateful, ungrateful, that it was very difficult for me to feel uh, sympathy for people who insisted that we are a country of racists, and they said it. Uh, yeah, they called us uh, systematic racism, uh, institutional racism. They compared uh, we supplying them, now I'm going to get a little whatever, tampons to food. Uh, if we offered them tampons, that was racist because we should know that in the Congo and in these African countries, they don't believe in tampons food how dare you feed us this food it was absolutely off the charts three thousand languages different dialects are spoken in the african countries that are now here and we want yeah. they want to be accommodated to accordingly it was their dispositions that i had a real problem with they talked about our cops and that we should not be funding our police the way we do. Uh, how dare you? Really now? You're going to tell us that we should take even, who are you to tell us that we need to defund the New York City Police Department even more and, and, and their resources, cut their resources even more? You know, this was bold, this was brazen. But what is even worse to me, Lou, is the fact that I see my colleagues in council actually believe that we're not doing enough. We have not yet reached a limit. I don't know what the limit is, Lou. Total chaos. Well, I think this that the that New York City is starting to show where the limit just might be. Uh, the oh, city yeah. is uh, on the verge of bankruptcy. Uh, if it were not for federal money, uh, the, the city of New York would be uh, well much closer to that bankruptcy. Uh, we know for the first time that the, the city has the highest vacancy rates in its office buildings of anyone in the country and never before in New York, and it's getting worse over the past year. And more illegal aliens are coming into the city, and you have a mayor who, for the life of me, I can't figure out how he got elected or why he would even want to keep the job because he is way, way over his head. We lost 500,000 New Yorkers in a short term of three years. 500,000. We have, best to our knowledge, I know it's got to be more, 200,000 illegal immigrants here. Illegal mm -hmm. immigrants. Right. Now, when I use the term illegal immigrants with my colleagues in council for a hearing such as this, because I did make that point that you are here illegally and you are making demands upon us illegally. We are taking food out of our New Yorkers mouths so that we could feed you. They don't like that. They cut me right off. And the colleague that came after me called me a xenophobe. And that's on, oh, yeah. that's on tape too. New York is becoming the world's soup kitchen. Yeah. And you can yeah, see you know, it. If, you know, if, if, if uh, Americans are such xenophobes, how in the world did these people uh, get here to begin with? I mean, think about, uh, think about where we have come in three years. An estimated 14 million illegal immigrants have been brought into this country by the Biden regime in cooperation with uh, non-government uh, agencies and organizations, uh, mm -hmm. not for profits, including Catholic right. charities, you name it. Uh, they're working. They they're working all the way down to South America to bring those people in Hand by in the millions. And, in and we have people Hand in this country telling us we're sy systemic racists. We you know How all of this you? bull. That's you know, right. It's How time dare for everybody you? To just say, it's bull. No, it's bull. And, you know, now we have Biden flying them in 
So they're not just coming by bus. They're being flown in. We don't know what we're doing. Biden is a disaster. My governor of the state of New York is a bigger mess with her allowing this to happen, you know, stroke of a pen. We've got a crime rate that's through the roof. Fire Alvin Bragg, bring back ICE. Again, Hochul, strike of the strike of the pen across the pad. There are so many things you could do. Mayor Adams is being pulled from left to right. There's no middle ground here. It's extreme progressivism that is at fantasy land. They do not live in reality. Because anybody who lived in reality would be able to see clearly, clearly that New York is turned into a third world country in so many ways. And it breaks my heart to say so. Born and raised here. Love New York. Love, love, love New York. And that's why I do what I do for a living. Well, and God bless you for doing so. And Vicki, I mean, we're, we're right now to that point. We're at a breaking point. I think we're seeing it in the polls nationwide. Uh, the support for, for Donald Trump is surging. Uh, they, all the polls show that they could convict him 20 times of any kind of nonsense that they've uh, ginned up. Uh, it's all fake and it's all viciousness on the part of the left. Uh, we're looking at a country right now that is at the breaking point and people don't want to acknowledge it. Whether you look at our, our markets, that are right now extremely, in my judgment, shaky. And it is a time for caution. This is not a time for us to think that we're going to be able to uh, write checks for $60 billion to the Ukraine and not have that impact our economy. We're a nation right now that will, this year, be $36 trillion in debt, running up a deficit of a, of a trillion dollars every, every 100 days. And you have you know, people here talking about sending money around the world. They're mad, utterly mad. And there is, is a insanity. consequence for it, irrespective of your politics, right? It, 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 the insanity is ruling the day. We have Donald Trump right here in New York right now. And God bless his soul. I don't know how the man gets up every day and does what he does. Uh, his fortitude, his strength, his undying commitment to the American people is visible to everybody. When they took him up to Harlem, to Jose uh, Albers uh, uh, Bodega, we stood up for, I stood up for Jose uh, uh, Alba when uh, Bragg was trying to do what they were doing to him. When you had a thousand people, Dominicans and blacks lining the streets, 1,000 Lua or more, cheering four yeah. more years, four more years, that tells you as clear as a bell that the native New Yorkers of this city are considering Donald Trump. Right. And he and what you know, in that in that moment, and I think we've shown those pictures, uh, by the way, Vicki, on the on the show and uh, to see those young kids up there. I mean, they were starstruck by Donald Trump uh, and those mm -hmm. people in that crowd. Uh, they were thirsty for leadership. Uh, and by the way, that bodega, just yeah. to remind everybody, was where uh, he, where the uh, clerk uh, had to defend himself against uh, uh, the criminals, uh, the guys who wanted to rob him. And as a result, the the bodega clerk had to go to Rikers Island uh, until his trial, where he was instantly uh, acquitted because it was self defense. Uh, you know, he he showed up at the right place, the right time, with the right people. Uh, those uh, those folks are Trump uh, Trump supporters, and I hope they're going to be Trump voters come November fifth. Vicky, we're out of time. I appreciate everything that you do for the city. I appreciate you being with us here today, and uh, I'd love to have you back soon. Vicky, Thank thanks so much. Thank you very much. much. It was my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Good. I look forward to another visit. Thank you. Thank you. you got a deal, Vicky Palladino, New York City Councilwoman. Up next, Homeland Security released the. Uh, the illegal alien killer that uh, murdered Lake and Riley back uh, into America because lacked the detention space in the facility. Uh, it, no one should be surprised. Uh, President Biden couldn't even say her name correctly. We'll be back with that and more. Stay with us.
I'm excited to announce we're having a huge MyPillow spring sale. And here's a few examples. Buy one of our MyPillow 2.0s, you get another MyPillow 2.0 absolutely free. Made with cooling technology, the best pillow ever just got even better. And this just in, nine brand new colors and styles of our Percale bed sheets. They're made with the finest long staple cotton, and now you can save 50% or more. That's as low as $24.98. And for the first time this year, I'm bringing you our My Slippers and Sandals for as low as $25 a pair. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your MyPillow 2.0s. Buy one, get one free. Percale sheets as low as $24.98. My slippers and sandals as low as $25 a pair. And for a limited time, when you order $75 or more, your entire order ships absolutely free. Three years ago, FrankSpeech.com was launched during the height of mass media censorship to give voices back to those who had their voices silenced. This April, Lindell TV celebrates three years of uncensored truth about America's stolen elections, the voting machines, and the fight to return to paper ballots. Today, we stand at the precipice of a new era covering the most important presidential election in American history, an era defined by the battle for some of our most fundamental rights, freedom of speech, freedom of press, and secure elections. We at Frank Speech refuse to be silenced. We refuse to bow down to the forces that seek to dictate what we can and cannot say. We are the media now. Join us in this fight at frankspeech.com. You might not want to hear what we're saying, but we're going to say it. Meet Jim and Mary, a seasoned couple who have weathered the storms of life and have witnessed the evolution of our great nation. Today, they embark on a journey that's as important as any they faced before, exercising their right to vote. They belong to a generation that built this country, fought for its values of faith, family, and freedom, and now they worry if their votes will truly count. But fear not, Jim and Mary are members of AMAC. As AMAC members, they can rest easier knowing that AMAC is at the forefront, fighting to reduce potential election fraud. AMAC stands tall, advocating for voter ID, opposing ballot harvesting, and scrutinizing the risks of mail-in ballots. Stand with Jim and Mary, join AMAC today, and let's preserve and uphold the values that make America strong. Because your voice matters, and so does your vote. Welcome back. The Department of Homeland Security released the illegal alien accused of killing Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley. According to his immigration file, Jose Ibarra was released in 2022 under Secretary Mayorkas's so-called power of parole, and because they lacked, they said later, detention space. The power of parole is only intended to be used temporarily when there's an urgent humanitarian need or significant benefit to the public. It is clear his release met neither of those standards. In point of fact, Ibarra was given a work permit in addition, despite having been accused of a crime against a child in New York and having those charges later expunged by New York authorities. Listen to Senator Hawley forcing DHS's Mayorkas to admit that Lakin Riley's killer was released lawlessly by the Department of Homeland Security. Expunged. Nothing is done to this guy. He had a criminal record to start with. He's in the country on illegal grounds. You have falsely and illegally allowed him in. He commits a crime against a child. He's not prosecuted. It's expunged. In November, get this, in November, Ibarra files an application for employment authorization. And unbelievably, on December the 9th, 2023, it's approved. So this is your policies in action, Mr. Secretary. A criminal is permitted into this country on grounds flatly 
not permitted, flatly contradictory to the statute. He commits a crime against a child, and then he gets a work permit. He gets a work permit. You want to know why all of the jobs in the last two or three years have gone to illegal migrants? Working people in this country can't get a job. Their unemployment rate's high. Why? Because of things like this. And then what's he do? Well, we all know that in February, he commits the heinous crime against Lake and Riley. And there you are. Well, Speaker Mike Johnson is right now preoccupied with getting Ukraine more of your tax dollars and also a little money from China just to cover the debt. Foreign aid tops America's borders. That's the way Johnson sees it. No, we don't need to be secure ourselves. Let's secure Ukraine. Well, let's bring in now Pinal County, Arizona Sheriff and U.S. Senate candidate for Arizona, Mark Lamb. And, and Sheriff, thanks for joining us here today. A lot of issues that uh, we've talked about before that are in front of the country. Uh, we've just watched uh, Alejandro Mayorkas. His trial was over before it began after he was impeached by the House. The Senate just uh, with, a, with one hand flicked it away and said, that's it. Uh, we are right now... Uh, we're right now looking at a border that is lawless, an administration that is lawless. Uh, and in point of fact, uh, the, the Mexican drug cartels own that, that border for all practical purposes, don't they? Oh, absolutely. They control it. They control it on their side. And for the most part, they control it on our side. You know, we have scouts that live in our mountains. There are scouts that are all through those deserts in the trafficking areas, whether it's through Cochise County, Pima County, Santa Cruz County, my county. Uh, yeah, so they own it. Uh, we've had, you know, where there's government signs that basically say, hey, just FYI, if you're coming in here, you may encounter smuggling activity. That's basically like our government throwing their hands up and giving up. Well, giving up is what uh, sh sheriffs, uh, police uh, chiefs across the country have done in some cases when it comes to actually helping enforce uh, interior uh, enforcement by the uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Uh, we, we learned that, uh, that Lake and Riley, the, the young lady, the nursing student in, in Georgia, uh, the sheriff in her area there, uh, Clark County, uh, had campaigned on not cooperating with Immigration and Customs Enforcement uh, and we're seeing that, and I think it seems to me in more counties across the, the country, is that in fact the case? Yeah, I think you are seeing more and more of it. I think there's a push by very, you know, uh, socially minded people that want to change America. They want to undermine the rule of law. You know, sheriffs are a little bit more difficult, but what they've been going after is a lot of the county attorneys, district attorneys, attorney generals in states. And they know that those folks, if they can get them to not prosecute, it makes our job as hard or even sheriffs. But then you've had guys that have actually campaigned as sheriffs on the fact that they won't work with ICE, that they won't work with Border Patrol. I'm going to tell you right now, that is not me. We have continued consistently worked with Border Patrol. We, we fly our helicopters every day. We do all sorts of work with Border Patrol. Um, we are a 287G jail, which means that we actually work with ICE. And here's the sad part, though. Even though we work with ICE and we tell them when we arrest somebody that's here illegally, where they used to pick up, let's say, 80% of the people that we told them about, now they're picking up pretty much zero of those people. Is that right? How long has that been going on? Well, it started when this administration took over under Biden and uh, Mayorkas. And then what's happened is progressively they've taken less and less. And now pretty much they don't take anybody. Which means, let me tell you what that means to the viewer. So if I arrest somebody, whether it's domestic or some state crime, they do their time in my jail. I notify ICE that they are being released. And instead of ICE coming and keep picking them up and sending them back to their respective country, there's nobody to pick them up. So basically, I now have to release them into our communities. And then you get what you got with Lake and Riley. Yeah, and, and then we learned that part of the reason is that her killer uh, was uh, released from a detention center because they were quote unquote overcrowded. Uh, it, it's hard to it's hard to stomach some of the 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 bull that is going on generated by Mar Mayorkas and the the Biden regime when it comes to the border patrol. Uh, it, it 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 is a frankly for the nation. 
uh, it is just a, a, a mission to hell because uh, the illegal aliens are getting away with it and they're incentivized by the Biden regime. There's, there's a tremendous crush on you uh, and your fellow sheriffs and border counties and border states. Uh, I mean, it is a tough situation. And then we're looking at the continued import of fentanyl killing hundreds of thousands of Americans. And it goes on. There hasn't been a single step taken to slow down those deaths, to slow down fentanyl, uh, and to recover part of that border, at least, uh, from the Mexican drug cartels. You're exactly right. Not only have they not taken steps to stop it, they've actually taken steps that have made the problem worse. Everything they do continues to make the problem worse, whether it's the human trafficking, which is at an all-time high, which is when the humans are trafficked in here now, the cartels are extorting the men, they're, they're raping the women, they're using the women in the sex trade. You know, um, 100,000 children, the, uh, the government has admitted they don't know where they are. And then you talk about the fentanyl, Lou. I would tell you that terrorism activity is alive and well in this country. We have been conditioned as Americans to see terrorism as a bomb going off or as a plane crashing into a building or as somebody walking into a crowded building and shooting a gun. But I will tell you, terrorism is coming the way of fentanyl poisonings. It is the leading cause of death in America between the ages of 18 to 45. It is claiming more American lives than any army has ever been able to claim. And that, that fentanyl poison comes from China. It's placed in the hands of the cartels and they bring it in and then it takes American lives. And there are American families that live in terror every day that one of their loved ones might die from a fentanyl poisoning. They're, this is truly uh, affecting Americans at, at a greater uh, extent than any other terrorist activity has. Yeah. Well, Sheriff, thanks for all that you do. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb of Pinal County, Arizona. Uh, thanks, as, uh, thanks as always and all the very best to you. God bless. Thank you, Lou. God bless you too. Thanks for all you do. One last thing before we go. Actor and great American John Voight is making a strong case for re-electing Donald Trump in 2024. Here he is. We must bring back the safety of this great country. We must bring back our greatest achievements that once were blooming. My friends of all colors, all religions, all nations, we must remember given truth, one love under God. This life is full of injustice. This land of Israel is in danger. The land of the free, the USA is in danger. Let us all come together and make these countries safe again. We must stop this war. We must stop this darkness, this negative plague that is lingering. How? Vote for the only president that could save these countries once and for all. Let all nations bloom. Let them shine. And my friends, the only way President Donald J. Trump, he and only he, can take this hardship and turn it into a magnificent triumph. He can wipe out this, this swamp and bring glory. John Voight. Well, all of you out there know that Mike Lindell and MyPillow are no longer with the support of their box stores or the shopping channels that they once, uh, once had. They've been part of this cancel culture. So they want to pass on the savings directly to you now. They're having a $25 extravaganza. And when Mike started MyPillow, it was just a one problem, one solution product company. Well, since then, with the help of his dedicated employees, they now have hundreds of products, hundreds of MyPillow products now. Some of you may not even know about them. And to get the word out, they're having that $25 extravaganza going on right now. Two-pack multi-use MyPillows, just $25. MyPillow sandals, $25. Their six-pack towel sets, $25. And brand new pack uh, dish towels, you guessed it, just $25. For the first time ever, the premium MyPillows with all new Giza fabric, any size, any loft level, even king size, just $25. This amazing offer won't last long, so be sure to order now. Just go to or call 800-977-9152 and use promo code DOBS. You'll be glad you did. 
And join us on my podcast, The Great America Show, available at ludobs.com, wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, thanks for being with us here today. Join us Monday at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. The Lindell Report is coming up next. Have a great weekend. And good night, and God bless you. Mike Lindell here, and like you, I see our country being destroyed daily. We face massive.